What's interesting about autonomous technology is that regardless of whether you're flying drones or airplanes or driving cars or flying a rocket to space or flying a spacecraft in space, I think the core technologies um, are um, largely analogous. So uh, just think about what it takes a human to do what a human does. Um, you need a power plant, right? You need a place that you get all the energy to drive all your systems, drive your muscles, drive your brain, enable your eyes, et cetera. Um, so you need a power system. And in kind of the most recent evolution of vehicles, that's really battery electric systems, which comprise of a battery um, and then uh, uh, basically something that's called an inverter, which converts the energy that's in the battery into the voltages and the currents needed to power the rest of the vehicle. Um, the next thing that's needed uh, is uh, eyes and brain. So you need sensors, things like cameras, LIDAR, pressure transducers, um, pitot tubes if you're an aircraft, um, inertial measurement units, which are things that can tell the orientation um, the pose of your vehicle, um, we call them IMUs for short. Um, and you need networks to transport all that sensor data to a computer and you need compute, you need super powerful, um, power efficient, super powerful from a capability perspective, but actually low power from a, a consumption of energy perspective compute. Um, and then you need actuators. Those are the muscles of uh, an autonomous vehicle. So on a car, that will be actuators that do your steering and your propulsion, um, which are usually electric motor driven things. Um, in a spacecraft, uh, you have uh, uh, gimbals that let you thrust vector um, the spacecraft. And uh, in aircraft, of course, you have actuators that actuate the aerodynamic surfaces like the flaps and the rudder of the aircraft. So think about it fundamentally as that power, sensors, compute, actuators. And then I'll add one more thing because this often gets missed, which is connectivity. And connectivity is really important because in general, humans um, have not developed robots that we feel uh, can operate completely independently without any connection to any broader context, either human control or information like maps that you can get over um, the uh, internet wirelessly. Um, for spacecraft, things like um, GPS connectivity, um, things like command and control. So a spacecraft is pointing one way or is in one orbit, you wanna move it to another orbit, you have to be able to communicate with it. And uh, even if it has all the intelligence that it needs to do the task, the intent, what you want it to do often needs to come from um, outside. Um, and then for autonomous systems in general, um, nothing's perfect yet and so um, the ability to provide input to that autonomous system from outside, be it a call center, be it a ground station, um, enables more autonomous technology to be used um, earlier across, across all of these different applications. Um, in terms of what's difficult, um, all of those pieces are difficult. They really are. Um, on the power side of things, um, the energy density of rechargeable batteries is a big challenge. And you see Tesla's chasing that challenge. Um, you know, any company that does mobile products uh, uh, chase that challenge in order to provide customers the most video time and most talk time and most internet browsing time. Um, spacecraft deal with that because um, when you're not getting energy from the sun, you're limited by what your power pack can deliver and how far you can charge it. Um, and then of course there's convenience. So how long does it take to charge a battery is an important thing. You know, it's effectively refueling the system, but with electrons. Um, on the sensors front, um, you know, I think of this as like garbage in, garbage out. And one of the biggest challenges with sensors is that um, 
how far they can see and how kind of broad of a field of view they can see to what degree of resolution is really important. Um, and it's very different creating something in a laboratory or creating one of something um, that performs really well, having something that performs really well that can also get bumped around and shaken and you can produce millions of a year is a totally different story. And so I think the general um, trend that is gonna need to happen with sensors in general uh, is that they're gonna have to move to um, more solid state, uh, more common materials, um, and uh, their assembly lending themselves to automated processes. So if it takes, um, you know, days of human hours to assemble uh, a uh, communications device that goes on a spacecraft or a LIDAR that goes on to um, an autonomous vehicle, be it a, a driving autonomous vehicle or a flying autonomous vehicle, that LIDAR is going to be really expensive. When you drive things to solid state and you remove all those moving parts, they become more manufacturable, they become simpler. Um, and they be, because they're more because of that, they're also more reliable, which means your warranty costs come down as well. So all of that will drive volumes up, uh, quality up, reliability up, and, and uh, costs down as a result. 